Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, a couple of videos ago, we did a slide up text over image that somebody asked for. Somebody asked if we could do a drop down text over image with call to action. So that's what we've done here. Really easy to do. There's no coding involved in this today at all. You can just do it with the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, I'm going to drop down. I'm going to add a new row. A little green button to add a row. I'm going to add three columns to my row. Put as many or as few in as you want there. And to do this today, I'm going to use a call to action module because it's got a little button. So it's popped in a call to action right there. And you may have noticed, or you may not have noticed because there isn't one, but there isn't a button. So put what you want your title to say there. Put what you want your button to say just underneath there, and I'll show you how to make it show up. Obviously, put your content down below here. Don't want quite as much of that in mind. Let's shave a little bit of that off. Now, just down below is where you can put your link for your button. Once you put a link in there, I'm just going to put a hashtag as a placeholder. The button will show up. If you want to add a link to the whole module, you can put it in here. Same link or different link, whichever you prefer. And always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off-site to somebody else's site or a different site, open it in a new tab. That way your sites are going to stay open. Great. Just down below, we've got the background. I've got mine set as a default blue for this. I'm going to take the opacity down on this by clicking on the field. Little variegated slider there. I'm going to take it down. That way when I put an image behind, we'll still be able to read the writing, but see a bit of the image too. Great, well let's save that. Next step is we want to put an image behind this. To do that, we need to go into the row. And the image is actually going to reside in the column that this is sitting in. So I'm going to go into the column. I'm going to go down to background. We've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern or background mask. I'm simply going to put a background image in there. Click on the little button. Pop in whatever image it is you want to pop in there. And as you can see, as we've taken the opacity down a bit, you can see a hint of that image behind. Now, while we're in the column, and this is important you do it in the column, I'm going to go over to advance because what's going to happen is I'm going to push this whole module up here somewhere. And then when we hover over, I'm going to have it drop back down. But you don't want to see it when it's up here. To make sure that we can't see it over in advance, we're going to go down to visibility, going to go down to horizontal and vertical overflow and change them from the default to hidden. That way anything spills out of that column, we're not going to see it. Now chances are that you are going to have different amounts of text in each of your boxes if you're making more than one. If you're going to do that, you can actually give your column a fixed height here. If I close up visibility, go to custom CSS, in the main element, you can give it a fixed height by just using height and then whatever pixel value you want. Looks like I've got a couple pixels left over there. Let's make that maybe 295. That's great. Everything's covering it. And if you need to, let's put a semicolon on the end of that. You can hit the little icon that's common to all Divi modules. If you roll over dark writing thing you want to affect our main element here. If it's got a cell phone type icon, you can set a different state or different value for tablet and mobile if you need to. Great. Well, I'm going to leave mine just like that. I'm going to save that. We'll go back into our main row settings and save that also. Great. Well, let's make the magic happen. We now need to push this one out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go over to my design. We're in the call to action module over in the design tab. I'm going to go down to spacing. For the margin, I'm going to flip it down till it's minus one. I know that's about 300 picks, 298. I'm going to say negative 300. And it's disappeared up to the top there. And we've just got the image. And that's great, but there's no way of triggering it to pull it back down. So we can counter that by putting 300 pixels extra padding on the bottom. In fact, we might want to put 350 on there. Let's try a 350. 
as you can see, we've got that blue color now. We've got something that we can actually trigger it by when we put our mouse over it. But of course, we want to see that image in all its glory. We don't want that blue background there until it drops down. So we'll fix that in a moment. So that's fine. And again, common to all Divi modules, if we roll up over, if there's a little arrow there, we can set a hover state. Desktop state is when the mouse is not on it. Hover state, obviously, is when the mouse is on it. So when we hover over it, I'm going to flip that back to zero. And as you can see, it's popped down like that. Don't need to change the padding if you don't want to, because our overflow is hidden, and that padding down at the bottom is just being hidden down there. So when we're hovering, we've got that. When we're not hovering, we've got that. Now we want to get rid of that blue when we're not hovering over it. To do that, let's go back to the content, back down to our background where the original blue was. And again, let's hover up over, get the little arrow up, desktop state. Well, I want to see that picture perfectly without any blue. So I'm going to take that opacity slider all the way down. That way it's totally transparent. And when we hover over it, I want to bring, bring that blue color back to where I can read the writing, but still get an idea of the image behind there. Something like that. Obviously, adjust it to how you want it. So when we're not hovering, we've got that. When we are hovering, we've got that. Now, the time it takes to flip from desktop to hover with Divi is... 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. I like to slow mine down for a little bit of drama. To do that, let's go over to our advanced. We'll go down to transitions down here. There's the default 300 mils. Let's bring it up to maybe twice that. Let's say 600 milliseconds. Just over half a second. Don't want any delay. Want it to happen as soon as the mouse hits it. Transition speed curve I like to use for these hover effects is ease in and out. That one right there. They're all subtly different. Some will work a lot better in certain situations than others. Ease in out is usually my go-to for my holder. So if we've done everything correctly here, this should work for us. Let's save the changes. And before we actually exit, I'll show you how easy it is to duplicate this if you want some more. If we go back into our row here, let's go into the second column. Put a background image in our second column. Go over to the advance and do exactly the same as we did for our first column. Visibility or horizontal and vertical overflow hidden. And if you need to use a fixed height, you can do that in a custom CSS, just like we did on the last one in the main element. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Now you may notice, if we save our road changes, there's nothing showing up there. There's no content, you see. So all we can do is we can copy this module here. Now because we've actually given it negative margin, the module itself's up here, so you have a hard time getting it to it on the front end. If that's the case, go down to your little purple button. Bottom left-hand side, there's a little icon called Wireframe View. Click on it, it'll take you to the back end. You can get to things really easy that way. I'm just going to clone this one. Drag it across that other column that we created. We'll go back to desktop. And now you can see it's in there. Let's save draft or publish if you're ready. And exit the visual builder. And let's go down. Here's our first one. Taking 0.6 of a second to roll down. They can roll over the call to action and get to the text and what have you. When you let go, it's going to ease back out there. The second one's going to look exactly the same. There we go. And these will actually work on tablet and mobile. Of course, on tablet and mobile, they'll actually have to click on them to make that happen. But that's quite a nice effect. Let's check that out. I'm using Google Chrome here with the inspector tools. If I roll up, here's the ones we had on the top. Click on them. You're going to pop down just like that. And here's the ones that we did today. And it'll be similar on iPad. You can always change the height if you need to on, on these devices like I showed you. Let's go to iPad Air. There it is on iPad Air. If we click on the other one, it's going to drop down like that. 
So there you go, guys. I hope that's answered that question for you. Let's get rid of my inspector now. Here's how to add some drop down text over an image with a call to action button. Nice little feature to have on your site. These hover effects are great for getting people's eyeballs on things quickly. If people are mousing around and this sort of thing happens, it's going to get their attention pretty quickly, which is what you want. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a demo video. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.